Gaming and caffeine, two things that go together like cocaine and rich people. Everywhere you look nowadays, you see caffeine. Bam, bang energy. Does that say Dr. Bob? Literal gaming fuel. It's getting out of hand. Seriously, what even is this? This isn't new. We all remember washing down some Doritos with a mouthful of Code Red. We've been conditioned for a long time. There's nothing like ice cold Coca-Cola. But before we talk today, let's go on a little history trip. Come on, come on, get on the bus. Seriously, get on the bus. Miss Frizzle's going to kill us. Losing on down Main Street, you're relaxed and feeling good. No gamer is safe, a caffeine story. A long ass time ago, ancient Chinese legend says that Emperor Shen Nong first discovered tea when the wind blew leaves into his boiling water. Obviously, this shit changed the game. Coffee is kind of debated, but most tales point to Eastern Africa, notably Ethiopia, as the discovery of crack. I mean, coffee beans. Sometime around the 15th century in what is now Yemen, the lads took this and turned it into this making coffee. The Arab world perfected coffee and are majorly accredited with influencing the spread of coffee houses around the world. I don't drink coffee at all, but I've been to Jordan and that kahwa is no joke. Anyways, Miss Frizzle, take us to 1900s America, please. I'm kind of scared. Losing on down Main Street, you relaxed and feeling good. In 1905, this totally ethical company, Monsanto, started putting caffeine in Coca-Cola, helping boost it to the fuck-ass company we know today. Fuck Monsanto, all my friends hate Monsanto. By this point, coffee houses were common all over the globe. Caffeine was literally everywhere. In the next 100 years, humans went absolutely sicko mode. We got chocolate, we have gum, we have pills, we have espresso, you got soda, you name it. We're gonna put some caffeine in that thing. So how does this tie into gaming? Well, let me tell you, Q, 1989. Ah, uh, 1989. NASA had just launched the Galileo, the Berlin Wall came tumbling down, the Game Boy was released, and most importantly, Nintendo and Pepsi teamed up for an advertisement. This ad prompted gamers of all ages to indulge in the caffeine wonders of Pepsi possibly marking the beginning of all the shit that we see today. This is the earliest ad I could find, but Nintendo was back at it again in 1993. This is Mario Soda. I love how Luigi got kicked off of his green can in favor of Yoshi, like... Poor Luigi. Although these were not filled with caffeine, they were just another attempt to associate gaming with soda. Cool Spot also came out late this year, a game where you play as the literal red dot from 7up, which definitely has caffeine. All right, all right, man. I thought this video was about Mountain Dew. I don't care about any of this shit. Whoa, ho, dude, calm down. I'm literally about to get there. Frizzy, take us to the 2000s. By the 2000s, gaming was everywhere, just like the grease on your controller. Friday night gaming sessions with the boys were here, and there was one thing on all our minds. Guys, guys, my mom says she'd order Domino's and four liters of Pepsi. Yeah! Corporations found a new infinite money glitch. Hip marketing campaigns aimed at greasy gamers. In 2007, Game Fuel was released. No, not you. This is Mountain Dew Game Fuel a cherry citrus flavor produced to help market Halo 3. See, even Master Chief needs his energy. Each bottle came with 120 milligrams of caffeine, 30% more than your regular Mountain Dew. The idea here was more caffeine, more Halo, and subsequently, more money, baby. Oh, and it's sold, inviting PepsiCo to spread the joys of Mountain Dew all across the land, even into Azeroth. In May of 2009, Mountain Dew launched the Game Fuel Choose Your Side campaign. Two different sodas dropped this time, Alliance Blue and Horror red. Yeah, I'm gonna go with these guys. Proving success yet again, PepsiCo is one step closer to world diabetes and cornering the gaming market. So what was their next big move? Doritos Crash Course. Let's just skip 2010. COD Modern Warfare 3 dropped in 2011, featuring a special version of Game Fuel that has a code for double XP. Now there's even more reason to buy this shit. Mom, seriously, I need it. It's for double XP. Put that back. You're not getting this. Ah! These in-game incentives launched Game Fuel to new heights, but not as much as Doritos. The Doritos Pope himself, Jeff Keighley, blesses us with the endless gift of Doritos and Mountain Dew to promote Halo 4. And when the Dorito Pope offers, you take. You have been blessed. 
Doritos are also owned by PepsiCo, so we know this relationship was bound to happen. The gamer identity forged by rivers of Mountain Dew and hills of Doritos was hence born. And of course, it only gets worse from here. Boy, did shit get weird after Halo 4. They really just said fuck it and promoted everything. We went from Master Chief to fucking Connect Sports Rivals and Rise, Son of Diabetes. 2014 and 15 were the same, just Call of Duty reskins, but in 2016, Mountain Dew promoted possibly the most criminally underrated multiplayer master piece. Titanfall 2. Yeah, you Apex kids don't have shit without this Titan of a game. Pun intended. This trend continued, and in 2018, Mountain Dew officially partnered with Optic Gaming, a pro esports organization. Speaking on sponsorships, the Dew isn't the only one to do this. In fact, in 2008, Red Bull sponsored Walshi, a pro Halo player. Their first step into esports established the brand as a true partner. Just look at how it's developed. They got players, teams, and events. They are super serious about esports and caffeine. A 12 ounce Red Bull has 111 milligrams of caffeine, more than your average cup of coffee, and certainly more appeal in the gaming world. Monster also has an esports roster. The list just keeps growing. But amidst all these giants, there was one little crackhead slowly climbing up that mountain. G Fuel released in 2012, but I know damn well you didn't hear about it until PewDiePie endorsed it in 2018. Since then, every damn creator has a G Fuel partnership with discount codes and, for the lucky ones, a unique flavor. There is something different about these little jars of crack. One little scoop of G Fuel is 140 milligrams of caffeine, way more than anything we've talked about so far. This is kind of scary as the celebrities promoting it have all these impressionable fans that inevitably will want G Fuel. All of the flavors are designed with these colorful, exciting wrappers that you just want to look at. G Fuel is huge now, like a legit household name. I mean, hell, even Charlie has a fucking G Fuel fridge in the back of history. Gaming and energy drinks are as interconnected as ever, and gamers from across the world suffer from this dependence. Personally, I'm not a caffeine drinker. I started with Bang when those came out, but I ditched the habit, and now the only thing I'm banging is your mom. Jokes aside, it does worry me that kids can access the product so easily, and I bet some parents don't even know it has that much caffeine. Then again, when I was in middle school, I remember tons of people already drinking Starbucks for some reason. Clearly, these troubles are deeper than gaming, and to think, it all started from Mountain Dew. Is caffeine even a bad thing? Well, it's a touchy subject as so many people actually rely on caffeine. I mean, how else can you crank those 90s and hit musty flicks for hours on end? Ah, they don't call me cracked for nothing. <laughs> it is a perfect storm. Gaming requires so much attention and focus, both benefits of caffeine. But what about the side effects? What happens when your tolerance builds too high and that one G Fuel just doesn't scratch the itch anymore? Well, lucky for you, because once again, I'm sponsored with Raid Shadow Legend. <sighs> Let's just face it. Maybe it wasn't Red Bull. Maybe it wasn't Mountain Dew or G Fuel but you probably consume caffeine in some way or another. And if you are a gamer, you are not safe. You, and yes, I mean you, are just another target in the scope of all of these products. I wonder how many unsuspecting gamers have been led down this never ending path, all because Master Chief was on the bottle. So let's end this with a bang. And no, not that kind. As I said previously, caffeine and gaming are truly a match made in hell. And as all toxic relationships, this couple has had many highs and many lows. It's such an interesting tale and one that many have fallen victim to. There's also nothing wrong with kicking back and crushing some dudes with the boys. Just be cognizant of what is going inside of your body. These companies don't give a shit about you, but I do, but I don't. If you or a loved one has been diagnosed with caffeineoma, you may be entitled to compensation. You may also have the following questions. How did I spend my entire paycheck on caffeine? Why is my resting heart rate so high? Should I try meth instead? You need answers, which is why we offer a free book written by medical professionals who have treated sick fucks like you. Toll free at 1-800. I'd like to end this with a famous quote, and as Mikhail Gorbachev once said, let's tear down that wall and bring me caffeine, or something like that, but either way, thanks for watching. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. It really helps. Thanks for looking out. See ya.